Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this edition of my video game reviews, I am doing Fallout. The very first PC game I have ever beat, and only beaten so far. I'm a spoiled console gamer, but hey, there's tons of PC games that I would love to play, but my computer is just a hunk of junk. <laughs> But uh, luckily there are some great classic old games, excluding DOS, because I've tried that. Been there, done that. Uh, not for me. <laughs> I'm not that patient when it comes to old DOS games like this. I like mid-range, semi... Uh, sof far more sophisticated games than, say, uh, uh, Eye of the Beholder back in the day, but eh, now... Fallout. Fallout is a post-apocalyptic turn-based RPG that's in the same realm of, say, let's say, uh, a tabletop of the day. And uh, it is so interesting. I Maybe in the past I've said a few negative things about a post-apocalyptic genre, but that's only toward the ones that uh, haven't done it right or uh, try too hard and just came off stupid. Case in point, Doomsday. That movie is fucking stupid. Ugh. Uh, it's just like, as Eric said before, uh, you're only trying to emulate... When a film has done it the best, Road Warrior, and uh, you try something after it, it's not going to be as good. Because this game is heavily inspired by Mad Max, Road Warrior, and... Uh, Kinda of funny, the first time you get armor in this game, you look exactly like Mad Max, and you do get a pet dog with you. But, uh, off to the story. Uh, Fallout is an alternate history video game in which your the world has ended in the year 2077 of October 23rd. It's basically World War III that happened. And, uh, before the war happened, the governments and uh, other companies were uh, getting together, like vault and creating vaults that say that uh, would protect from nuclear fallout. A bomb shelter, if you will. But these bomb shelters are like mini communities that can hold up up to a thousand people at per vault, and there's uh, I think there's 112 vaults? Or something like that. I can't remember that much. Um, details, and uh, Followed, um, it's a fantastic game. I had so much fun playing it. Uh, the story is solid. Sorry, we got clean off my mic. Sorry about that. I clean off my mic. Cat hair. Cats think it's a chew toy or something. Um, you play a character of, you play of one of three, uh, pre-made characters, or you get to make your own character and character creation, which is always great. I just love this special system they have up. Special system stands for uh, strength, perception, uh, special intelligence, endurance, intelligence, uh, charisma, and uh, luck. If I <laughs> if I messed up spelling special, um, me derp, me not smart. Um, but I just love the whole system how it works out. And uh, opposed to lots of tons of different RPGs in which you do have a mana or a magic system. Like saying there's always going to be three classes of people you're in classic RPG fashion. You're going to have the warrior. You're going to have the... You're going to have the... Hold on one second. I'm calling. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> I didn't want to restart. <laughs> Go away, Mom! Okay. Um, where was I? In, in traditional RPG systems, um, we have the warrior and the... Uh, Warrior, the rogue, and the mage, or basically, you know, the warrior, the thief, uh, and the wizard. Uh, one's the guy who does the attacking, and one the guy does the sneaking, and the other guy does the magic spells. And here, uh, it is kind of divvied up like this, but more so like, there's one guy who does the fighting, it just kind of semi-classes, the three prerequisites that they give you. There's one guy that gives you the, the, the fighting, the, you have a talking type character, uh, you have a sneaking type character. That, that's basically three. And uh, instead of magic spells, you're giving up a divinity up of ma different type of, uh, let's say, skills. Lockpicking, sneaking, uh, first aid doctor, science, 
uh, outdoorsman, you know, different type of skills that kind of makes up real life skills that do make up for uh, the lacking of magical uh, inheritance that this game has. But um, there's no mana system, though you can use your skills and you can use them up to, I think, five in one day. Uh, then you have to wait a day, then rest up. It is very much that, uh, yep, yeah, very much in that vein of you have to rest to get health, and there's resting sessions, extended rest. Uh, very much like a D uh, Dungeon Dragons tabletop game, which I do like. It really uh, helps that way. Um, the type of character I first picked when I was playing through it was the brute character, me strong, me smash, uh, the Max Stone. But uh, the problem with him is intelligence so low, you don't have that much dialogue options. And uh, then I said, ah, fuck it, I scrapped that character and started over again. And I picked uh, Albert Cole, um, who is the talk character. He is charismatic and he has good vary of skills. I like that. I like being able to talk my way out of any situation. That's the way I always did it when I was playing KOTOR. I just love that idea. The able, you can convince anybody of almost anything and just run around circles around them in a conversation and just trick them in such a semi-psychotic of... <laughs> it's almost very puppet master like of just talking them in any way you want to do. But, uh, less of that. Then you have the sneaking character who has more um, action points. Action points able to move you in battle sequences, move faster, and do things. Um, also with the talking character you have the option of speech and uh, barter skills. Barter is the ability to uh, get better prices and sell things for higher, which I think is very essential in the game. Having high skills and able to get good price on things is essential because you know if you can you've got to learn how to lock pick because uh, that's a vital skill I always have to say lock pick is a vital skill uh, for blockers foot lockers and other things doorways uh, to get into places and get you better armor earlier but I gotta say I love this game love the story it is post apocalyptic with a nice twist uh there's very funny moments, a lot of uh, cultural references, say, from Godzilla to Doctor Who. I've shown uh, Duke a funny little Doctor Who tidbit they had in here. Uh, <laughs> he thought that was funny. But, um, aside from that, the story's great. I don't want to spoil anything, but, uh, it... The only thing that I would say that's really the biggest kind of Achilles heel for this game, that there is a time limit. Um... Like, say, if you don't beat the game in 150 in-game days, um, this village will destroy and you won't get a good ending. Or, you're, uh... That... That, I really, I hate forced, uh, time, time limits because you don't have the time to really, uh... to, uh, enjoy the game, to really play it at your leisure. It really just... It has that overshadowing of looming doom. It's like, I gotta go, gotta go, move faster, move faster. It's just like, I gotta get this, and I don't have enough time. Eh. And you kind of wig out, and you don't you don't really get to appreciate it. Luckily now, I'm playing Fallout 2, which they fix a lot of things, which I'll get into that review when I've done it, but I don't think I'm even close to beating that game, because it's far bigger in scope, far longer, far more items, improved many things. Um... Yeah. <laughs> That's Fallout. Great music, great themes of 1960s, uh, of, uh, almost Anne Rand like proportions, but, uh, it's just a great game. <laughs> the only time Fallout got really big was 3 came out because it changed everything. But, uh, this is a great game in itself. Um, great game. Fallout. Maybe youth, maybe you think of me when you're alone, and I forget the lines of the song. <laughs> Bye.